Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM90. Today we're gonna play with Meshtastic. I got this new tracker from Seed Studios, the T1000E. Let's go take a look. And while we're at it, I'm in an area where there isn't a whole lot of Meshtastic. So I'm gonna show you how to get some Meshtastic fun without being in a full mesh area when you're the first person to bring the new technology to the world. Let's go. And just like that, it's back in the box so we can do an unboxing together. Doesn't even take up the whole thickness of the box. And I thought the box was small. Look at that thing. That is so cute. And it's ever so slightly see-through for you prison edition folks. Little piezo speaker there. Oh, that's a push button. That's an interesting push button. It looks more like a Phillips head screw behind it. Oh, I turned it on. Getting ahead of myself here. But there really isn't all that much to it. You get the sense cap itself and then you get their special magnetic charging cable, which is USB-A on one end and this weird newfangled four pin magnetic connector that goes on to the back like so. So you can charge it. And then I have seen people put lanyards on these things or hang them from their existing name tags because it's kind of, you know, name tag shaped. All right, so there's the sense cap part of it. Now we got to do the pair it with the phone part of it. So let's start up some screen recording on this. Skip the countdown because we're already here. All right, so I've got Bluetooth on and I am ready to start checking. I'm just doing some guesswork here. I'm assuming that I need to put it into pairing mode somehow. There's a little light there for you. I'm just gonna hit scan and see what happens. So there is a new device, Meshtastic 6168. Yep, and that is the MAC address on the back here. 6168, so that must be the one in question. And then it wants to try a pin. Status indicators, flash new firmware, troubleshooting, getting started, Android app, power on, connect via app, find your device. Ah, uh, the default code is one, two, three, four, five, six. We were so close. One, two, three, four, five, six, pair. Pairing complete. And you can see we're lit up. Firmware update recommended. To benefit from the latest fixes and features, please update your node firmware. Our latest stable is 2611. Okay. And it's telling us that the device is connected. We've got 43% battery at 3.66 volts. Hardware is the Seed Card Tracker T1000E. We've got the long name, the short name, last heard, share contact, favorite, ignore, remove, last position, request, remote, firmware edition vanilla currently installed, latest stable, latest alpha. All right, I am south of Tucson. That is absolutely correct. And there is nobody near me that is on Meshtastic, but we're gonna figure out a way to fix that too. Let's go get the firmware upgraded. Flashing these things is actually fairly easy. It's a USB-A cord, so I need an on-the-go adapter to get me from USB-A to USB-C for my MacBook. Once I get that taken care of, then I can just plug it right into my MacBook. My MacBook's gonna ask me if I would like to allow this thing to connect, and yes, I would like to allow it to connect. In the browser, we need to go to flasher.meshtastic.org, and it's best that you do this in a Chrome-based browser. So I'm in Chrome. Can't get more Chrome-based than that. So I'm going to select a target device, and there are a ton up here. So I'm gonna pick Seed, and then the T1000E, and it's pretty cool that you can do these by picture. So we're at T1000E, and then which firmware do I want? Alpha, beta, stable, or beta, unstable, or alpha. So I want the latest stable, or beta, and that's gonna be 261160. Yep, math is hard sometimes. And then I'm going to hit flash. There's a whole bunch of information and stuff here about what this update has, but if you've never flashed a Meshtastic device before, or if you've never used Meshtastic before, then none of this really matters. Get the latest version, you'll be good to go. If you, for some reason, know for a fact that you don't need the latest version, then you'll know what to do. But otherwise, the latest version, latest stable version is always the best. So let's hit continue and then enter DFU mode. DFU is device firmware update. So I'm gonna enter DFU mode and it wants me to pick a device. And in this case, it's fairly easy. I'm on Mac OS, so it'll tell me. You can see all my Bluetooth devices and I wanna do the T1000E boot and hit connect. And I got this message here and I think that's because I just was taking my time helping you guys along the process. I'm gonna hit reload. I'm gonna select target device. I'm gonna do seed again. I'm gonna pick the T1000. I'm gonna pick the latest beta version. I'm gonna hit flash. 
I'm going to continue. I'm going to enter DFU mode. I'm going to pick the T1000. Yes, I'd like to allow it to connect and then ensure the device drive is mounted. The drive may have a different name depending on your device. That's true. Download or copy. I'm going to download and let's see, it shows up on my Mac OS as the T1000E as a mounted drive. So we'll pick that. There's a bunch of stuff on here. I'm going to ignore that. I'm just going to hit save. The auto reboot may cause messages about file transfer failures, write errors, or device being ejected. Okay. And we've got a bright green flashing light on this thing. So it's telling me it was doing the thing and then the light went out and you heard the doo 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 in the background. So we are good to go with our rebooted firmware. Let's get back over and take a look at our software and see what's going on there. All right, we automatically reconnected to the T1000. You can see here on the screen that we've got some information coming on here. Let's tap into that and let's see what it says about firmware, which was down at the bottom. Currently installed 2.6.11, which is true. That's where we were. 2.6.11.60.ec.05e. And remember, it was .60 something when we were over on the computer doing the flash update. So we are all flashed and updated and ready to roll. And that's pretty slick. So now that the firmware is all done and we validated that whole thing, we're going to set a region. And my region is going to be United States. And we'll hit save. And that's under the LoRa settings. And that's going to update to the radio, the T1000, and then it's going to reboot the T1000, which is why you're hearing all those noises in the background. So by default, you're going to have a long fast channel. And if you click in that, you'll see all of the messages that are shared with all of the other users that are in the long fast channel. And this yellow icon up here means that it is secured or not secured. Let's check out this other button down here at the bottom. That's going to tell me all the nodes that are nearby and I'm the only node nearby. So if we take a look at the map, you can see that there is nobody around me. 6168 is me. And there's probably not going to be anybody around me for a while. And maybe there might be some snowbirds in the winter that come down here. I'm in Southern Arizona and it's getting close to winter. But what do I do if I want to play Meshtastic and there isn't any traffic around the area? I'm going to go into settings and we're going to scroll down here. One of these settings is called MQTT, which I don't know what it stands for. Message queue something. Transfer something? I don't know. It's not important. What it means is we're going to send messages over the internet instead of over the local mesh network. And why would you want to do that? Well, this is the exact use case as why you would want to do that. It's because there isn't any mesh traffic in the area in order to communicate with anybody locally. And I still want to play mesh. So I'm going to hit MQTT. And then I'm going to do MQTT enabled, obviously, so I can enable things. Don't hit the save button that popped up just yet. We'll talk about all of these defaults here. This is the default server. If you have your own server, advanced topic, probably don't if you're watching this, then you would enter that info here. Encryption enabled, you might as well leave it encrypted. Mesh topic, root topic is going to be mesh slash US, MSH, the abbreviation of Meshtastic. Proxy to client enabled. My Meshtastic radio does not have an internet connection inside of it. So it's going to actually proxy through the phone to the internet and then from the internet through the phone back to the Meshtastic device so we can play Meshtastic over the internet. So you're going to need that. And then I don't want the map reporting turned on at all. I want to see people around me, but I don't want them to see me because I'm kind of shy. So I'm going to hit save. And this is where it gets a little tricky. It's writing to the radio. This might be considered a UI bug. I'm not sure. But basically just keep your ears open and you'll hear the tracker beep a little bit when it has done the thing. And now it's done the thing and you can see we've got the red icon down here. I'm going to hit close and it should automatically reconnect for us. And it has automatically reconnected for us. And now we're online. Great. So we're going to also go back into LoRa and we're going to do... OK to MQTT. And we're going to hit save. Delivery confirmed. Good. Now we've got to go back to channels and we've got to configure our channel list for communication over the internet. So I'm going to take this long fast channel. I'm going to tap on it. And you can see long fast. You can see the pre shared key is AQ equal equal. That's the encryption key for the long fast channel. And then we have this uplink enabled and downlink enabled. Uplink would be my messages going to the internet, downlink would be messages coming from the internet to me. So I'd want to tap on both of those, or you could just do downlink enabled and you can just be really nosy and pay attention to what everybody else is saying, and they would never be able to hear from you. Position enabled, I'm going to turn that off again. 
but if you do have that on, you can turn off precise location and you can make it a little ambiguous and tell it, you know, 14 and a half miles away is where I am. But I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and I'm going to hit save. And now we've got the up and down cloud icons there. So we're good to go on that part. Let's go back to long fast, look in the channel. Don't see any activity just yet. That's fine. Let's look at the map. Do we see any other nodes yet? It should take it a while to fill in. 9% battery life. I should probably plug this thing in. All right, I just plugged it in. It should report that it's charging here any minute now. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting for stuff to download, I'm going to go ahead and send a message out. Hello from AZ US. And now we are attempting to send and there's a little cloud icon. And I would assume that that cloud icon is going to fill in once it's acknowledged. And right now it's waiting to be acknowledged. And my uplink and downlink were not enabled for some reason. Oh, I forgot to hit the send button. Delivery confirmed. Okay, now we'll go back here. My message was not confirmed, but that's fine. And we show that we're plugged in because we did do that. Nobody on the map yet. Let's send that message again. Still waiting for confirmation. Let's check our channels again and see if it... Yep, it's still enabled. We're good to go there. Message has not been acknowledged yet. Max transmission reached. All right, so we are not making it to the network. All right, so playing around with this is the name of the game here. And I went in and I changed the root topic from MSH slash US to just MSH, which is the way it used to be way back when. I don't know when it changed, but it has changed. And re-uploaded that to the radio. And now we're starting to see some nodes. So I have seen a Helltech V3 client who is mesh... 06E4 Strawberry, MQTT, which is how I saw them, and they are four hops away. Let's check out our map now, and I can see some people over in California area, Santa Cruz, Glendale, Hollywood Hills area. Okay, excellent. Just saw another one, Mount Bliss. Just saw another one, H4YT. Let's go into the long fast room. We're going to start seeing a whole bunch of traffic. You actually might see a ton of traffic if you do this. So I'm going to say hello from AZUS again, now that we are connected and we're in the right room on the server. I'm going to hit send, and we have got the message acknowledged. Excellent. And, oh, we got a new message. <laughs> They're eating Cheetos. hit that button once just to silence that. And then you can just have a wonderful conversation with complete strangers. That's 6168, probably not a good name to identify me in a world worth of people. That's the last four of the MAC address on the tracker device. So I'm gonna go into settings and I'm gonna look at changing my name. We go to user and then I can change my long name and I'll say uh, T-O-T-1000, and my short name is just going to be T-O, and then hit save. And then it's giving me some information about public keys and whatnot, and fix that if you decide you want to fix it. I just want to play right now, which has caused the radio to reboot, and it should reconnect automatically. Looking at the red icon down here in the bottom that says no connection, it's now reconnected automatically, and we're online, and it says I am T-O. So if I look at the map, come back over here to Arizona, there's Yuma, Arizona, there's Phoenix, Arizona, there I am. And instead of saying 6168, now it says my name. And I'm starting to see some more people. Let's see the list of people there. Pretty cool. Let's go back into messages. No new messages except for the Cheeto dude. Excellent. Well, there's a quick intro to the T1000E and how to get you onto the MQTT network so that you can see traffic all over the United States or all over the world instead of the no traffic that's in your area until you get Meshtastic started. Get one of these for yourself, get one for a friend, and then you are off-grid messaging. But until then, the grid exists. Why not use it? There are links in the description down below for the T1000E. And while you're headed down there to check that out, hit that subscribe button on your way. I'd greatly appreciate it. In the meantime, if you've ever wondered how to build your own repeater on Meshtastic, this is the video for you. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.